Let's begin the bulletin with our main story for tonight. Now, government is working to issue the country's first ever green bond in two years. This would, however, be subject to favorable conditions on the international market. Earlier today, there was a meeting to finalize the possibility of issuing a government paper. But what more do we know about this green bond? Uh, Philip Namfuri of Joy Business joins me for the details. You know, I'm always excited yes, to have yes, you on business. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, you know, we've had a lot of interesting names when it comes to bond. Yeah. Um, very fancy names. We have the diaspora bond. We also had the panda bond. Yes. And then uh, now we have green bond. We also had something like this. Some, is this samurai, 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 samurai bond? bond yeah. Very, very fancy Yen names. denominated bonds from you Japan. You know, yes. very fancy names, I must say. But when we're talking about um, these bonds, and yeah. especially the green bond, what do they really mean? And let's narrow it, narrow it down to the green bond. Okay. Es essentially, this is all borrowing, mm -hmm. government borrowing or sovereign borrowing. So the reason why there are differences in the names is where they're coming from. Okay. You spoke about diaspora bonds. Mm -hmm. In this issuance of a bond, we're looking at Ghanaians living outside the shores of Ghana. Mm. With samurai bond, we're looking at a yen-denominated bond, and yen is the Japanese currency. Mm -hmm. When we say panda bond, that's a renminbi. Renminbi is a Chinese currency. So it's just issuances with specific targets or specific names just to make things easier. But it's all got to do with So boring. perhaps I give a bond or because Sandra, Sandra <laughs> bond. That's on the lighter side. So yes, let's come yes. to the green so bond. With the green bond, yeah. we're not looking at issuance, but you are getting money for environmentally friendly projects. It makes sense. That's why it's green, right? That's why it's green. Okay. So if they say we're going green, for example, if in your office you say you're going green, you're going to cut, uh, you're going to recycle your paper like you have here. Mm. You're going to use energy efficient bulbs. You know, you're going to do things that's going to preserve the environment because we get paper mm. from our trees. Mm. So when they say going green, we're just going to do environmentally friendly stuff. But we're going green with bonds. You're going to get money, which are going to use to invest in projects. For example, renewable energy projects, mm -hmm. wind, solar, all these fall under green projects. Mm. So with, with this type of bond issuance, uh, more or less there's some strictness on the bond. When you take the funds, you must make sure that you're using them for the intended purposes. Mm. Normally, when we take our bonds, we use them for a multiplicity of reasons. We right. can put so you're here. talking about environmentally friendly bonds. So what does that connote? What's that? When we say, okay, you spoke about renewable energy, energy and all that. Okay. So anything that is so, friendly to the environment? Yeah, so from our interaction with uh, Mr. Zakaria Isahaku, who is mm. the Investor Relations uh, Director at the Ministry of Finance, he was looking at even beyond that, we can go into agriculture. Mm. Anything that has to do with sustenance of our environment, and not a distraction. And you know why in uh, times of climate change, and it's been going on for a while, some are climate deniers. They want to deny that it exists. But Ghana has signed on to the uh, Conference of Parties, the Climate Change Action Group, where all the world bodies, all countries have come together to sign, to move towards um, reducing our carbon emissions in mm. the environment. And now we're on the Sustainable Development Goals. Right, yeah, uh, I was coming to that, yes. Yes, as the name suggests, sustainability. Mm -hmm. And if we put this framework together, this green bond stuff, and it goes well. We can also unlock ESG funding. Let me explain ESG. Right. This is a, it's a branch under finance. Uh, it's now emerging. It's under the broader part of sustainable and responsible investment, where the E stands for environmental, S stands for social, and G stands for governance. Mm. Any investment you are making, you're supposed to consider these three things. The environment, the social got to do with the people, and then the governance. So that all boils down to the sustainability. That's why it says sustainable and responsible. Mm. So you go just beyond making returns, and you start considering everything, particularly the environment. Let mm. me just chip this in. That's what we call PPP, yes. Profit, People, Planet. Okay. First, it was just profit. We make money, we make money, we make money. Now, when you're making money, consider the effects on the planet. So. It's so, Philip, how much are we looking at when it comes well, to Well, we haven't gotten a definitive It just had a discussion figure, yes. in, stage and you know, now. Yes, first National Bank, FNB, mm -hmm. was leading the discussion. She also had an interaction with uh, one of their heads of commercial banking, mm -hmm. Victor Asante, and she spoke at length on why they have the experience, because they've done this in other economies. And you know they are a big bank. So, obviously, yes, they'll have some wear with when it comes to these things. So, they just want to lead and steer discussions with the Ministry of Finance and other ministries to see how best Ghana can do and take advantage of this emerging part Right, of it's quite interesting. But looking at our, uh, our conditions now and what's happening in the country, our climate and everything that has to do with the environment, do we really need this bond? Do you think we need it? Yes. Um, as we are going forward, we would need it. Some argue that 
Africa is most hit by the effects of climate change, mm. yet we are the ones who have contributed less to climate damage. You have the big industrial nations, China, America contributing a lot. Africa is suffering from it. And we are still dependent on agri and other things. Mm. We would need to invest in those renewable, mm. in those green areas of those green sectors going forward. Well, the projection is two years. Uh, is it likely that we'll get there? Well, that one, uh, I can't say yet because mm. I'm sure discussions are still ongoing. But right. I think it's a good time for, to put everything on paper and then analyze the situation in the country. All right. Philip Namfuri is our in house analyst and researcher with the joint business team. And we've been discussing the green bond and the government is considering issuing in two years. Thanks so much for your time. Let's move on to other stories tonight. And yam prices continue to drop at Atebubu and its environs in the Bonahafu region. 100 tubers of the commodity, which formerly sold between 800 and 1,200 cities, is now going for 600 cities. The situation has left farmers in distress with middlemen cashing in. There's, here's a report by Mahmoud Nuruddin, from the Bonahafu region. Patience Bedu is a young farmer at Atebubu. She has been cultivating the crop for the past five years. Market price for her produce has dropped. Look at me. I am a woman, but I work so hard on the farm. Sadly, I get nothing at the end of the year. Patient said she invested about 2,000 cities to raise 1,500 pounds. As a woman, I'm unable to do it all by myself, so I hire laborers to do the planting sometimes and weeding. And I have to pay for all these with little return at the end of the year. Patients and her other colleagues brings their produce here to sell. A tuber of yam is currently selling at six cities compared to 12 cities in the past. So, what has accounted for the sharp decline in the price of yam? We don't know whether it's from the government or what, so that's why we are appealing. The government, maybe, but buyers have been saying there is no money. For Mankasin based Equia Fusua, a regular buyer, it's time to do business. The price of yam is relatively low in recent times as compared to the past. This time, you can even get yam to buy with any amount, even as low as three Ghana cities, you can afford a tuber of yam. Ghana is a major exporter of yam, accounting for over 90% of total annual volumes exported from West Africa. It is estimated 500 by 500 meter size of land when cultivated could yield 50,000 tubers of yam with a street value of $50,000. Unfortunately, farmers here are getting little or no attention from exporters. In fact, according to some of them, that when they are exporting, they are facing challenges, taxes and, and other things. When they send it, in fact, when they send it, they don't get anything. So they have to stop or limit the distance, the exporting. In 2012, government formulated the Ghana Yam Sector Development Strategy to support production, value addition and commercialization of the commodity. The strategy was a public-private initiative championed by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture as well as the Ministry of Trade and Industry. The then Trade Minister Haruna Idrisu indicated that the strategy was meant to improve yam value chain and position Ghana's produce as food for the world. But nothing has changed since then. Economic analysts are asking whether the initiative has really addressed the challenges facing yam farmers. Regrettably, yam farmers are the losers in this game, and it means government must make some positive moves for the sector to thrive. All right, so with a passion so much for meat, Stephen, with his master's degree in animal science, is taking his love for guinea fowl to the next level. What makes his business unique? Let's find out on tonight's episode of the Joy Business Van from Tamale in the Northern Region.
apparently not far from his dream of being a meat scientist, Stephen is working with his uncle on his guinea fowl business, G's Fresh Point. With determination and a clear career path, he joined his uncle's startup the business right after completing the University of Development Studies, where he attained a master's degree in animal science. Together, the duo decided to take the business a notch higher after the African Cup of Nations in 2008. It all started in 2007 when Kofi Jemfi, the director of Gist Fresh Point, came back from the United States and saw that there was, uh, I mean, opportunity in the guinea fowl business. But he realized that the guinea fowl farmers in the northern sector were not getting consistent market for their products. So he set up this to process guinea fowl, package it and sell. In the 2008, he realized that many people, the, the foreigners patronize it. It got to a point after the, the occasion, the business was still booming. And he said that it was good, he expands it. And then everybody who wants processed guinea fowl can get it from, I mean, the company. Ten years down the line, Angie's Fresh Point can boast of delivery points in Accra, Kumase and Tamale and even at the Tamale Airport. With a workforce of 25 and over 500 farmers who supply, Stephen is hoping to increase his numbers with the setup of a new factory, which will increase production in a day by over 800 times. Currently in the area, we do, the best we do is 700 days. But if uh, we are able to upgrade to this facility, we move to this facility, it means we are producing 1,500 beds a day. At least, not only us, the farmers are going to move from their situation, because imagine uh, a farmer selling maybe 1,000 beds in a year. That's just the smallholder farmers, not the commercial farmers we are even dealing with. Okay. So if we are going to process the abundance, we can process uh, five, um, 540,000 beds in a year. In a year. So if uh, each bed is even sold at 35 dollars, so you can imagine the amount of money that will be generated. Another interesting part of the G's Point business is its no waste policy and practices. With the help of a digester, they are able to process all the waste generated into poultry feed for farmers to supply to them. In fact, all the processes we do not generate waste. Okay. We actually convert the waste into some a useful product that can be used by the farmers Again. as a feed ingredient. And our main purpose is not just to sell to the farmers we are dealing with. This is to support most of the farmers to get us the quality material we, need, we actually need and to reduce their cost of production and also give us quality raw material. That's the best that we, we okay. are buying from them. In 2017, G's Fresh Point, together with some other eight businesses, enrolled in the Cosmos Innovation Centre Booster Programme, a programme for startups in agriculture. And this, he says, has been a great boost for his business. Things that we were doing and we didn't know that we are not doing right, through the training, we are able to realise some of the things that we need to put in place and things that we need to remove from it in terms of fundraising, in terms of, I mean, training, in terms of uh, working relations. And when it comes to um, investors' approach, uh, every investor and what he's in looking for. If it's an equity investor, he knows what he's looking for until you preach the message he wants to hear. He will not buy into your idea. So the K KIC program actually helped and trained G's to know how to raise funds. Although Stephen currently depends on farmers in and around Tamale for the supply of the birds, he's hoping to improve his business in some years to come by having a farm for the company and also including other birds into his production. We, we want to move this business into, it should become a global business, but not just based in only Ghana. Yeah. We want to be able to produce let people know what the notes can bring. Let people understand that guinea fowl is not just for, I mean, but it's a business venture that everybody can do. And we think that doing, producing guinea fowl in the north means many people will be employed. We want to see many people in the north get something to do and do something that they know how to do best.
I love our confirm, and that was a nice report put together by Karen Dodo. Now to other stories, and the Ministry of Science and Technology says it has plans to establish an innovation and research commercialization center. Speaking to my colleague Charles IAT at the Republic Tech Conference in Accra, Special Advisor to the Ministry of Science and Technology, Oliva Boachi, said the initiative is to help set tech entrepreneurs in the country. And are afoot to complete the establishment of the Ghana Innovation and Research Commercialization Center. This will enable tech entrepreneurs with the needed tools and finance to come up with innovative solutions to the country's socioeconomic challenges. Special advisor to the Minister of Science and Technology, Oliver Boach, explains what this project will mean to all social entrepreneurs in the country. This was at the sidelines of the announcement of the Republica Tech Conference to be held for the first time in Accra, Ghana. We think this is going to really help to drive our, our strategy uh, to apply science, technology and innovation okay. for our uh, national economic development. Mm -hmm. yes. well, you know, the, the kind of people that we're seeing behind us yeah. are techpreneurs, bloggers, freelancers, those who are really maximizing the benefits of technology as a way of living and even to improve their society. And this is Impact Hub. This is one of the incubators of Impact Hub, I believe. Right. Are there any plans by the ministry to ensure that we have more of these incubators in the country to make it far more easier for you know most of these young entrepreneurs to access technology and make it much more useful definitely um, right now uh, the ministry of environment science technology and innovation is uh, setting up a center we are in the process of doing it now uh, known as the ghana innovation and research commercialization center the whole essence of the GET Center is to help transform innovation into industry. What you see behind me are busy minds that are currently working here at the Innovation Hub of Impact Hub Africa. We get to speak to them about the replica that is going to be coming off and the experience in the entire market when it comes to technology, when it comes to you know, techpreneurship and when it comes to the entire outlook about this industry in the coming years. Uh, I think it will be an opportunity for a lot of us to explore certain things and get to know, you know, how to go around about it because you know how our system is and in Ghana it's a low, you know, when it comes to uh, technology, I think we do have some of the things but in use I think it's not really helpful how some of the things are being put into place. So I think it would be a great opportunity for some of the people in the tech industry. You know, industry yeah. right. For uh, Wikipedia in general, because in Ghana we have a lot of restrictions as to how um, licensing some of our monuments work in Ghana and some of um, getting um, some of our um, media files on Wikipedia. So I feel we should be able to have a conversation around that where there should be a form of open license where people would be able to freely license um, pictures, videos, so that it could be available for all to use. I try as much as possible to promote my business right from where I create the artifacts. But sometimes what we, we challenge, the challenge is the internet interruptions and all that. Because for instance, I have a project ongoing somewhere in the Atansi South region, a uh, district in Asant region. And uh, when you try to promote the business right there, then you realize that the internet doesn't become stable for your business. And that is a very uh, uh, big, 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 yeah, big challenge. The Republica Tech Conference will see tech entrepreneurs, bloggers, startups, and all stakeholders of digital media around the world converge in Ghana to discuss solutions to some challenges associated with working in the digital space. Welcome back, but it's a wrap for tonight on Business Live. But for more news, do log on to myjawonline.com forward slash business. My name is Sandra Isenamapenu. Thanks so much for watching and have a great evening.